When you go out of town, do you tune into the local stations you pass through? Maybe you switch to KMUN on your trip to Astoria, or maybe Cairo on your way to Seattle. What if your car radio was powerful enough to tune into the Andromeda Galaxy, over two and a half million light years away? Radio astronomy began in the 1930s, only several decades after the first radio signals were sent and received. Today, radio astronomy is credited with evidence supporting the Big Bang Theory and the first image of the M87 black hole, which is over 55 million light years away from Earth. Mount Hood Community College is offering a chance to see what radio astronomy has shown about the universe in full scale at the planetarium with radio astronomy discoveries and their immense instruments. So I joined MHCC uh, with the planetarium here in 2008. Mm. And the previous planetarium director, I think he resigned in 2010. And so I took over his position at that time. I was teaching all the astronomy classes here up until about a couple of years ago. I actually started off doing atmospheric physics modeling, where I was modeling air pollution. But uh, since that time, I was also running the observatory over at Clackamas Community College before mm. I came here. Way back in 1957, I was in Nehi. I remember my uncle was interested in space, and he heard about uh, Sputnik being launched. Mm -hmm. And so what he did was he got us all out in his front yard back in October of 1957. And he actually could see where uh, that Sputnik was crossing the sky. And he was pointing it out and I was going, where, where, where? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, my uncle got me very interested at a very young age. I'd spent a lot of summer nights outside in the backyard. I, I had a chance to sleep under the stars and I got to see meteors there yeah. quite often. In the uh, Virgo cluster of galaxies. There's a galaxy there called M87. Mm -hmm. That's a large ellipsoidal galaxy. Mm -hmm. And within the middle of it, they've known for some time that there was a black hole there. And they could also see from X-ray astronomy that there's a, a jet coming out of the middle of that galaxy that shoots matter both above the place in the center and mm -hmm. something out of the center. And the only thing that it could explain that is that there'd be a black hole there. What they did recently was they brought together uh, 10 different sites that they had that they all brought together to act as one huge radio telescope to yeah. image the sky. And they actually were able to image the center of the black hole. Yeah, I mean, no light can escape the black right, hole. Right, right. But what you can see is there's an accretion disk of all kinds of matter that's spinning in towards it, and it's really, really hot, and it gives off a lot of light. So yeah. you can actually see a, you can actually see this dark spot. Uh, a lot of the new observations are being done with these large arrays of radio telescopes. One of them is down in New Mexico. It's called the Very Large Array. Mm -hmm. And another one is down in Chile, which is called ALMA. And what they're able to do with ALMA is they're able to see radio waves just border on the infrared. And they're able to see things that it's up at such a high elevation as 16,500 feet. They're actually able to see how planets are forming around new stars, young stars as they're forming. With uh, the radio astronomy, we're starting to be able to see a little bit more detail and uh, it's, it's a very exciting new area. Levi Pack, KMHD2.